Good morning. I'm Reverend Jo Mead. I'm so happy that you have joined us here at University United Methodist Church on this third Sunday of Advent. The presents here have been wrapped. They will soon be delivered to our partnership church that will distribute them to Open Doors Transitional Housing Program. This is a season of giving, with opening our hearts, of giving to those that we may not know by name, but we know because we have been called by Christ to give with our hearts. Welcome. We want everything to look nice. The decorations of the season, our homes with their lights and tinsel, wreaths and ribbons. We want to lighten the darkness around us, bring beauty to the ugliness that wears us down. We decorate because it is a tradition because it lifts our hearts, because it makes us feel like children again. We deck our halls because company is coming. The prophet Isaiah smiled when he said, God will give us a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. No matter how far we feel from the spirit of the season, God promises to decorate us with love and joy. We light these candles as a sign of our joy in the beautiful things of this season. Not just the things that glitter and flash, but the deeper things, the beauty of the heart and the soul, the beauty of love shared in service and hospitality. We light this candle of joy because company is coming. O come, O come, come Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Wow.
Will you join me in the call to worship as we continue on taking the light from the Advent wreath, symbolically using the same candles here on the table in our opening to worship. And thank you to the Harpool family for doing the Advent wreath this week. Let us share these words together. We gather in love, we gather in hope, we gather as we are to praise God and bear witness to the light shining through all the darkness. Let us come as one people, one body, united in Christ. Let us come together and worship. Let our worship continue as we sing together, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Long-expected Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sins. Release us, let us find our rest in thee, Israel's strength. As we begin our time of praying together and enjoying this perspective on our Advent wreath, I invite you to draw in a deep cleansing breath and then expel those worries that are holding on to you today. Breathe in once more a deep cleansing breath and release all that bothers you. Let us join our voices in saying these words together. Loving God, thank you for giving us this time in Advent to learn and to grow together, for the excitement that is growing inside of us and for the happiness that this time of year can bring. God of light, even though this is the darkest time of the year, when the sun does not shine very much, we are glad that the story of Jesus coming into the world brings its own brightness and that it can bring excitement and wonder into our lives. As Advent passes by and we look forward to the promise of Christmas, thank you for showing us your love in the lives that you have given us, in our friends and families and in the world, all around us. Amen. And let us lift our voices now, reciting the prayer that Jesus gave to the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey guys, I hope you guys have had a really great week. I'm super excited to talk to you today um, for our children's sermon. So one of the things that I wanted to share with you is I had a couple of questions about some celebrities and I want to know if you all can help me out. Do you happen to know who this one is? you said Beyonce, you're probably right. <laughs> and, oh, this one may be a little tougher, but how about this one? Do you know who that is? That's right. It's Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs. So I have one more. How about this one? Do you guys know who that is? You don't? That, my friends, is someone named Gene Kelly. And he is a fabulous dancer and singer. And you're so young, you probably don't remember or have seen things that Gene Kelly is in. And maybe if you do like some musicals, you probably may have seen something called Singing in the Rain. Um, he did lots and lots of movies and um, some of the older generation in our church will probably remember when Gene Kelly was popular. So back to our story, I wanted to talk to you about this verse where John the Baptist is being asked by the Pharisees who he is and being questioned about who he is and if he is the prophet, if he is Jesus. And he says no. Now, the Pharisees want to make sure that they know who he is. And in John 1, verses uh, 23, 24 through 26, he describes Jesus and he describes why he is here to tell us about Jesus. He says, I am the voice of the one calling in the desert, make straight the way for the Lord. Now some Pharisees have been sent to question him. Why then do you baptize if you're not Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me. The, throng, the throngs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan where John was baptizing. Now, how does that kind of tie all together? Well, you know, there are some celebrities that we recognize and that we see and we know who they are just by their photo Beyonce Patrick Mahomes and that's what John recognized he saw Jesus and he knew immediately that he needed to go and share everything he knew about Jesus and prepare the way for him so in the same way that you all don't remember or know who Gene Kelly is it's our my generation and older's job to teach you about the heroes and the celebrities of the past just like when you know who Jesus is it is our responsibility to go out and tell our friends about who Jesus is all right well I'm sad we're not together um but I can't wait to see you all I hope you all have a Merry Christmas and if you'll pray with me before we go dear Heavenly Father thank you for today thank you for our friends Thank you for the ability to worship online together. Help us prepare the way for the birth of your son on Christmas. We pray that we will all soon be able to be together. But if not, I hope everyone stays safe and healthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye, guys. Today's scripture reading is John 1, 6 through 8 and 19 through 28. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would be believed in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. This is John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him, Who are you? John confessed. He didn't deny, but confessed. I am not the Christ. Then they asked him, then who are you? Are you Elisha? John said, I'm not. Are you the prophet? John answered, no. They asked, who are you? 
we need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? So John replied, I am the voice crying out in the wilderness. Make a, the Lord's path straight. Just as the prophet Isaiah said, those sent by the Pharisees asked, why do you baptize if you aren't the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered, I baptize with water. Someone greater stands among you, whom you don't recognize. He comes after me, but I'm not worthy to untie his sandal straps. This encounter took place across the Jordan in Bethany, where John was baptizing. Thank you, Lindsay, for um, giving us this scripture, which helps lead us into the place of the message today. So we, we've heard from the Gospel of John, but I want to just take a quick backwards jump to last week when we, we heard from the Gospel of Mark talking about John. You know how it is when people talk about somebody else and, and the kinds of words they use and how they describe someone and how would you describe yourself versus someone describing you? And it's kind of interesting. So in the Gospel of Mark, and we heard this last week, John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Now there was John the baptizer. But what we heard just a bit ago was there was a man from God, excuse me, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for testimony to bear witness to the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. So what is this whole idea about bearing witness to the light? What, what does it mean in, in kind of a big scheme of things? There was this guy, and his name was uh, Leslie Towns, and um, he did a lot of kinds of things. Uh, early in his life, he had done kind of some boxing kind of things and had a little bit of renown for that. And then he got into kind of being a stand-up comedian, and he did some dancing, and he did some singing, and then eventually he ends up uh, making movies. And then he's, you know, making movies. There's, there's a word, isn't it? Making movies. And he becomes so popular as he reaches a retirement age that he devotes much of his life to uh, returning thanks to those that are in the military and those that serve every week, every day, in the places across the world that are not safe, in all the branches of the military. And he eventually uh, had this signature song of thanks for the memories. And his full name was Leslie Towns Hope, and eventually he became just Bob Hope. And I mean, we know him so many well, ways, and we know, feel like we know him so well, right? Uh, so many holiday movies that I've watched with him in there, and just uh, his incredible uh, comedic timing. And uh, there was one clip that I had observed that uh, he was kind of in a large interview crowd and, and somebody just shouted out a question to him and, and said, uh, hey, Bob, where do you want to be buried? And he said, surprise me. <laughs> just this idea of being able to just, yeah, you know, it's not going to matter much to me. So whether we talk about Bob as, you know, Bob the comedian, Bob the, the dancer, he did the whole vaudeville thing, Do, uh, Bob the supporter of the military. It depends on when you knew him. Now Mark thinks of looking at John as John the baptizer. But John understands, and remember this is, is, is John, Jesus' cousin, has been called as a witness into the world. John has been called into a space of pointing to the light that is coming in the world. The light of Jesus. The light of God 
coming in the darkness. It's been probably now um, 12 years ago that uh, Steve and I had taken uh, some of our grandkids and, and my uh, niece and nephew that are about that same age uh, to Missouri and uh, we, we, we did the sights. And we went into one of the caves. Now this was one of them that you could drive through. Um, and of course you get so far back into the cave and you all know what they do. They shut off the lights. And it is absolute darkness. Have you done that? Have you done those kind of tours before? And it doesn't matter how hard you stare into that darkness. You see nothing because our eyes need to have light to start working. Or even a little bit of light, suddenly you are able to start seeing shadows and shapes that are around you. And I think this is what John was speaking to. The darkness of the world we all need at least a little bit of light. And that little bit of light is God's great love for each one of us, coming to us in our current circumstance. Not once we become better, not when we get more educated, not when we read the Bible every day, not when we, whatever, right wherever you are today, God, loves you and completely not conditionally and god is calling to you to see the light in the world i hope there have been times that you've been challenged with where do you see god around you and if you haven't been please accept my challenge i just gave you maybe for this week ahead where do you see god around you? Where is God active? Where is that little tiny sliver of light into all the darkness that surrounds us? I love that we have taken that metaphor of, of the light coming into the world and utilizing the candles and the lights on our trees and maybe even lights outside and lights in our communities that not everyone may view that as God coming into the world, but they understand enough that something new is happening. Something is breaking into the darkness. And I'm not sure what your darkness is, but we all are standing in a place of struggle this season. We are not able to be together in the building, in the church. We're not able to celebrate with seeing those little faces that we would usually see every week and be able to hear their, their great wisdom as they would answer back to children's time. Our medium has become much more going outward and we don't get to feel back what is happening from it. And that's hard for all of us, for the musicians, for those that are preaching, for those that are helping with the liturgy, everything. It is more difficult. And yet I don't want to make it sound like we have some kind of difficulty. You don't. I know many of you have just really hunkered down to stay safe. I know many of you have gotten the virus even though you've tried so hard to avoid it. And there are things that we simply don't know about how this virus works just yet. And some people have been able to get help or the virus did not do things in, in their bodies that were as um, tragic. And we've had losses of those that tried their hardest, and yet their bodies were not able to fight this incredible virus. We don't know what the months ahead hold for us. We know within the next week or so the virus uh, vaccine is to be in Wichita and frontline workers, those medical workers are going to begin getting it. Those that are sen senior living communities are going to start getting it. But we don't know what all of this means just yet. We're looking for the light in the darkness. And I think we need to take our cue from John and follow where the point is to Jesus. Let our gaze go to Jesus coming into the world, offering light 
and hope and possibility. You know, it's really weird in Advent to talk about resurrection, but that's the complete circle of the story that as Jesus has come to us, God among us, Emmanuel, in this human form as a newborn child, the eventual story becomes the resurrection over evil and darkness once more. We are people that stand in a place that we are never, ever promised no problems. We're never, ever promised smooth sailing. We are never, ever promised a life of only goodness. But we are promised that God is with us throughout all these days and that we need to remind ourselves the light is coming once more. Hope is is coming to us in a new way. And joy, joy, joy is with us even in our hardship. And we need to claim that today. As you think about the places you can make a difference, let it be through your offerings here at the church where we are able to reach out from the walls to make a difference into the community. Our Benevolence Fund is continually being um, requested for incredible needs here in community. And we know that's going to become more, not less. We know we're going to have an opportunity to do a special Christmas Eve offering. And that offering will be divided in half. That has traditionally been our, our goal these last few years to uh, use all of those funds and missions. So half of our mission will be towards the WSU Campus Ministry Connect. And the other half will be for a benevolence fund to help those people who have incredible needs that need immediate access to funding. Now, if you have a question about how that works, if someone calls us and says they need help with their, their rent or their utility, those payments are made directly to the landlord or the mortgage company or to the utility company. It does not go to the person. We're doing everything we can to be good stewards of that which you've trusted with us. Because we know that is your outreach from God flowing through you to give with generosity. I ask you to continue to wear a mask, to distance, to stay safe in all the ways that you can as we search for the light that is being given to us. And John is doing everything he can with his witness was saying, I'm not Elijah. You guys are getting that confused. No, that's not who I am. I'm the one here to testify to that which is coming. And so we wait and we watch and we give thanks to God that we are in a place that light is present for us, that joy, hope are present for us. And there is a new day dawning. May it be so. Amen. And so I symbolically accept your offering again. Those gifts that have come in, snail mail and electronic deposit, we give great thanks for the way you have supported our church, your church, throughout this time, because we have been able to make a difference in the world. You have. You have broken into the darkness and shed just a little bit of light into someone's life, be it a part of our children's uh, department and the very many packages they have sent out to the kids to stay connected. This technology to be able to come to you wherever you are. These are all pieces of what happens when you give to the church. And I ask that you continue to wear your mask. It is so important. I, I, I just have this feeling that we're getting so close to being able to say that this was a part of our past, but we're not there yet. And so please, wear your mask. Will you join with me 
and saying these words of gratitude and thanks to God. Gracious God, giving God, we come before you as we are, broken and fearful, joyful and glad, united in your love and the promise of your grace. We give thanks for all that we are, all that we have, and all that makes us, us. We offer these tokens of money as a sign of our dedication to your church, our community, and the mission that we carry forward together today and every day. Amen. Oh.
And so we are called from this space to go out into the world, to share the light that has been given to us, pointing always towards the redemptive love of Jesus, of God's grace-filled kingdom we are a part of. I invite you this week at some point to light a candle if you can. Maybe close down the other lights in the room and let there be darkness other than the light. And ask yourself, what does this mean for my life living with God, looking at the light of Christ among us? Will you join with me in these words of sending? Like John, we may not be the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor a prophet, yet we are called to serve God as part of this grace-filled family. So send us out, Lord God, to bear witness to your coming kingdom and the sun of light who shines for us all. Go now in peace.